I thought I'd do a video on making these um, truck style exhausts for smokers. I mean, you can use them for anything, but I make them for smokers. These ones where they're curved over at the end. It's funny that it turns out that there is a whole list of names of different uh, type of exhaust pipes. I guess the type I'm doing is closer to this, the West Coast Curve, but it's um, cut and welded rather than bent. So I'm going to make this out of stainless steel tube and I have some of it in the back of my car, my pickup truck. Um, so I need to go and measure the diameter, do a little drawing, work out some angles, cut it, position it all up and weld it. So I'm going to go downstairs and get the tube out. First thing I need to do is measure the diameter because that's important. So I'm going to take my calipers downstairs and measure the diameter. So this is the tube. It's a stainless of some description. I don't know what sort of stainless, something cheap, 304, something like that, I don't know. But it used to be on the side of my pickup truck. <laughs> I had one on each side, it came with it on a 2010 Ranger. And I scraped the bar on a bollard in a supermarket car park. So I just took them both off and I've got this one and I've got a bit left of the other one. They've already made a couple of exhausts for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this tube so we need to measure the diameter, which is important, to calculate the uh, shape and the angle. The diameter matters. Uh, we're going to do that 75 mil. 76.2. Sorry, I'm not pointing there. 76.2. 76. Right, so I've drawn an outline of the exhaust that we're going to make. It doesn't really matter how long it is, it's just this bit that matters. Um, I'm going to cut it to length, you know, when I've decided how long. Uh, so this is just a flat drawing, this is not a 3D model, this is just lines to represent. So I've done 76mm wide and 76mm here, obviously. Um, this angle from an upright across here is 45 degrees, so that's the, uh, the degree I want on the exhaust. And then um, this is what we need to know. So we'll measure that, and it's coming out at 112.5. That's a really weird number. I hope that's right. What does that say? 135. That's um, probably right. 112.5. That doesn't sound right, but it must be, so we'll go with it. So 112.5 is the angle we need to cut on the end of the first piece. So I'm going to do the first piece and then the second piece. So to cut the angle, there's this really clever website, which I'll have to find, it's here somewhere. A uh, really clever website that you put the data in and it gives you a printable um, template that you wrap around the tube. It's really clever, so I'll just set that okay, up. Here it is, it's called blocklayer.com. It does notching and uh, all sorts of clever stuff, um, but this is just like a mitre cutting. And it turns out all that bollocks about 112.5 is a waste of time because the, the, the information it needs is the angle of the completed joint, which is 135 degrees. So that's all it needs. So it calculates the angle that this bit needs to be itself. So what it gives you, so you enter in here, 76 mil and 135 mil um, angle, press calculate, and what it generates is this random looking curve and that little diagram just so you can be sure that you've got it right. So you click download or print diagrams and it generates a PDF and you just download it and print it. I hope this works. should do. I think the first page is just blank. Oh, there we go. That's it. So what we need to do is, is wrap that round the tube. Oh, it's putting some there. What's this? Oh, that's just a helpful little diagram. <laughs> we don't really need that. But what we do with that is wrap that around the tube and that will, what's the word? When, you, when that's rolled around the tube, that will produce a straight mitre, which we follow with the plasma cutter or the grinder or whatever. So I'm gonna cut this out, borrow some scissors from someone's desk, cut that out and wrap it around the tube and it should give us a flat line template. Now, I'm just gonna take it over to the tube to see if it lines up. It should do, as long as the printer's printed one to one. It's very obvious that it hasn't worked. Oh, I'm gonna to need to clean that tube before I put this nice white piece of paper anywhere near it. I'll put the tube and wrap the paper around. There is a little gap, maybe two millimeters. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let him have that, it's not bad really. 
So as you see, that the, the paper template has wrapped around the tube to produce a, a straight line, which is quite clever. So the next thing we need to do is transfer that mark onto the tube. And the way I've always done that in the past is just to spray it with a bit of spray paint, let the paint dry, and then take the paper off. And then all you've got to do is cut away the paint. Now we do have in the Magic Demi Purpose tool cabinet, the only spray paint that's in here is this general purpose white stuff. So I'll nip outside and spray a bit of that on, maybe give it a waft with the blowtorch to get it to dry quickly. And all we've got to do with the grinder is just cut away all the white material and, and sand it with a flat disc up to the line. One thing I am going to do before I do any of that is I'm just going to, the template has a centre line. I'm going to mark the centre line because I want to use that to align the second part when we weld it on. So I'm going to mark the centre line somehow, don't really know how. Just probably sort of sharpie and I'll just try and make sure it doesn't rub off. But I am now going to go and do this. Right, so I have painted it with the spray paint. Dried the paint off with the blowtorch, it caught a little bit on fire in some areas, but it's okay. So now we have a fairly hard wearing, still a bit hot, uh, line. So all we've got to do now is cut off as much as we can with the uh, slitting disc and then use the flat disc on the grinder to go as close as we can and just remove all of the white as possible as we can. And that will leave us with a tube with a perfect flat cut. So I'll take this into the workshop and uh, cut that off and see how it's So I have cut, there's the off cut, uh, just with the grinder and a, a thin slitting disc. I've cut the, um, the most of it off. I'm going to use a flat disc, one of these, and these things will eat that metal like it's not even there, it will just chew it straight away. So I'm going to use this to just bring it up to the line, which is a little bit more gentle. Well, I'm having a sudden panic, but I don't know where the key is to get the uh, disc off the grinder. I have a vague memory of the last time I used the grinder, I couldn't find the key to remove the disc. So I better look for that, and be here somewhere, and uh, change the disc over on the grinder and uh, remove that up to the line. Then that's bit, that bit's done, then we need to do the whole thing again for the other bit. So I'll do this first, and then we'll do the other. Again, that took longer than I expected, um, but I got there in the end. But one thing I noticed, which I don't remember happening last time, was the heat from the grinder kind of degraded the paint, which I guess kind of makes sense. But as I was working towards the line, the paint was kind of burning off and becoming harder to see. So I think what I'd probably do next time is, mark, is paint the area to keep rather than paint the area to get rid of. And then sand away the silver up to the line rather than sand away the white. So um, anyway, that's done. I'm going to hold it up against something flat. I need to try and find something flat. Uh, just to see if there's any gaps and see how I do. But that bit's done now. I'm going to probably cut it about here, make it longer than it needs to be so that I have an options to, to shorten it. This is going on a pizza oven. So I want to make leave this fairly long. So I'll probably cut it about there and then use the off cut to make the next bit. So the next job, I'm just going to check that I've done that straight and then the next job is to cut this just straight off and then make another cut exactly the same on the end of here. So I'm going to find something straight first to verify that that's flat. So we'll try and find something flat. Anyway, let's right, try. so back upstairs. So all we've got to do for this bit of chisel, so we've done this, we've just cut that line. All we've got to do for this bit is print out exactly the same template again to cut this. And then for this angle, I've mirrored this line about this line to give us this, which we will measure with the software. Oh, it's just 90 degrees, that's easy, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. <laughs> of course it's 90 degrees. So all we've got to do now is do another template and then carefully put them on the tube using the center lines to line them up, spray it, cut them both, and that was my tenth attempt at doing this because even though this is a 256 gigabyte phone, it's still full. <laughs> so it keeps running into the end of how much data it has left and stopping recording. So anyway, I put both the templates on. I've aligned them up with the crack, so where the two templates join up. So the area that I'm keeping is this area in the middle. So I'm going to cut here and cut here. There's going to be a weld here that joins to the other tube. This tube's going to be, this edge is going to be open. 
um, and I'm going to line up, I'll mark the centre punch a row of dots here, which will help align this tube to the other tube when we weld it so that it's correct. So what I've got to do now is spray that, dry it with the blowtorch, take the templates off and then cut and grind and fettle it all in and then we can clean the paint off, clean the edges and, and weld them together. Right, so I've marked this. So if we hold up the first bit of metal like that, you can kind of see the shapes forming. There it is. So I'm going to cut. Oops, I'm going to cut this line first because if I cut this one first, when I cut that, I'm going to have nothing to hold. Can you imagine holding a tiny little bit with one hand and grinding the other. It's going to be horrible. So I'm going to cut this line first, which will free up all of this. Then I can hold this one here with a glove and, and do that one. I'm going to do that now. Right, that's the first one done. So that's going to be the exhaust. It's quite hard to get right into that corner with the flat wheel. But if I hold it up against the flat surface, it's pretty good. I mean, there's a few high spots, but it's pretty good. So we'll move on to the next bit now, which is that one. Oh, I just realised that is going to be hard to do, isn't it? I'm going to have to clamp it down. I don't know, we'll see how we get on. Ta-da! There it is. So... Get the idea. So the next thing I've got to do is get the paint off. I'll just spray it with acetone or something. Give it a good clean, and then we'll line everything up and we'll start with... So here it is, on the bench. Now, it's hard to see in the video, but the... Two sets of uh, centre punch dots are aligned. I am using a 2.4mm electrode. I would prefer to use a 1.6 for this, but unfortunately the collet for my gas saver, the 1.6mm collet, disappeared. It rolled away, never to be seen again. So I'm going to have to do it with a 2.4 and 2.4mm filler. Got the welder set to 60 amps and I've got the pedal. So I'm just going to tack it, right, boop, 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 buzz it a few times. I'm going to change the cup though for a bigger cup so I get a bit better gas flow. So I'll just tack it and then I'll roll it over carefully, tack the other side and then I'll run and do the proper weld. Alright, that's it tacked. There's a bit of a gap at the back. Uh, I'm not sure if that was from bad fit up or whether the part creaked because the stainless uh, expands a lot more than you'd expect. I put the current up in the weld a little bit because it was struggling to pull. And I dipped my electrode once, I had to resharpen. But I'm pretty much ready now to run along and uh, do the welds. So, I will do that. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm not the neatest welder in the world, this is quite thin stainless. But, it's good enough. I closed the hole with that so I didn't blow anything through. Colour's alright, I mean I might grind that off and polish it anyway. But something to note, inside there, on the back of the world, there you go, see it there, they call that pineapple. And what happens is the heat from the weld on this side um, is shielded by the argon which comes out of the torch, that stops it oxidising with the, uh, the oxygen in the air. Inside the tube there's no shielding gas and it the molten metal is so hot that it basically rusts instantly, even though this is stainless. It corrodes with the air and rusts and it bubbles up and you get this rock hard crust in there. If you were doing this for nuclear or for a power station or for food or medical or anything where it mattered, they would back purge this so they would block off both ends of the pipe and fill the pipe with argon and have the argon flowing through so the argon is basically coming out of the gap as you weld it and that shields, they call it back purging, but that's see, that shields the back of the weld and stops it from doing that. This weld would not be acceptable in anything industrial. Maybe once that was uh, sanded down, you could call that like a handrail or something, but because of that corrosion on the inside, this would never be acceptable in aerospace or anything, but that's to be expected. I mean, it's just a piece of stainless. So, looks pretty good. That will be on the pizza oven. I'll probably cut it down a bit. So there you go, that is how to make a truck style exhaust for your barbecue. <laughs>